okay? So really what you need to do is balance amongst these four things. Is the journal in the right subject area? You know, don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Are other papers that they have published kind of of the same sort as yours? You know, you say, oh, this is a biodiversity journal. I'm going to publish my new species description there. Well, your new species is biodiversity, but if the journal doesn't do al alpha taxonomy, don't ask them to start with your paper. One thing that is too common these days is impact factors. Um, many of you, I, thankfully in my situation, no, but many of you will be judged on whether you publish your papers in uh, journals that are called, it's called indexed, uh, but that have an impact factor rating. Anybody know whether your national systems include impact factors or not? Arturo is going yes. Uh, many places in the U.S. do. Anybody else? Don't know? Jean, how are you evaluated on your publications? Uh, well, it's, uh, let's say, on the base of the number of publications. And then uh, uh, five years ago, something like that, I insisted on uh, papers published on indexation on, uh -huh. and later on impact factor. So okay, so it's <laughs> numbers and impact factor. Exactly. Okay. I have a so to go from the level of uh, assistant to full professor. There is, a, let's say, a number of years, and then you submit your let's say your documents, uh -huh. that must include a number <coughs> of publications, a given number of publications, and also in journal, in this journal, and also in the journal with the impact factor. Okay. So it is. Alex, how was your system? Alex was just promoted recently, so. Well, it's quite interesting. Obviously, they look at number of papers, but that's not the key, because you could have three, four papers that are loaded, well written, and making strong impact. Mm -hmm. The other thing they look for seriously is what they call predatory journals. Uh -huh. This is the kind of journal that you write a paper, the following week is published. They don't look much at the quality. Some are called open access, and the open access here is your ability to pay $500. Remind me at the end and I'll show you all, actually we can, well, I, at the end I'll show you all a website about predatory journals. It's really, really useful. Yep. So what do they do about impact? Well, they look at impact factor. Of course, it, you must, from getting to associate professorship level, you must be an international scholar, that is to say you might have published, you must have published most of your papers in recognized international journals within your chosen field. Okay. So not necessarily any <coughs> impact, high impact factor journal, but within your field. And the papers should be of high quality such that, because your paper could be sent to anywhere in the world for assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not necessarily huge volumes because they have what they call the splitter. So one good paper, instead of writing one good paper, one could split it into right. several papers. Right. Of course, the other thing is the diversity of journals that you publish in. So a kind of not publishing your paper in one journal, are you French to the editors? <laughs> the editor-in-chief, so mm -hmm. it should show diversity as well. Okay. So these are basically what they look for. That's interesting. That's, that's about as balanced a description as you will hear. Mm -hmm. um, to give you one extreme, I have a, uh, a colleague in China who is at the level of 
assistant professor and obviously looking to be promoted up. And so we were talking about this one day and he said, well, it's eight papers with an impact factor of one or more and one paper with an impact factor of eight or more. Yeah, which is basically PNAS plus biology. Very few are in that level. Um, in Brazil, it's, it's very strictly impact factor or nothing, no credit. In Mexico, it's even worse. It's to get your doctoral degree, this is in some of the systems, to get your doctoral degree, thesis chapters have to be published in impact rated journals. Not just submitted, but published, accepted or published. Well, the other thing is that you must publish at least some of your papers in local journals. Ah. Because um, <coughs> some of the research that you do should directly feed into your national economy because you are funded or you get some amount of support from that's, the national That's government. very interesting. So you don't like target all high impact factor journals yeah. outside yeah. to the exclusion of hmm. developing local journals as well. In, in fact, in Mexico, at least a few years ago, none of the national journals had a rating in their point system that got above one. Mm -hmm. And international journals were all well above. And so basically nobody would publish in Mexican journals. So now what do you know about impact factors? Who creates them? Anybody know? Huh? Garfield? It's uh, well, no, it's Thomson Reuters, which is a huge publisher. That's the company. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. Essentially, impact factors are administered and applied by one of the publishers. And so imagine a football game where one side of the game, one team, is also doing the refereeing. Okay? Which side is going to win? And the really sad thing is, if you look at you know, the top 10 journals in our field in terms of impact factor, they include some papers that are of zero importance which is to say the important thing is not the journal. The important thing is the paper and its content and its import. And what's more, you know, <coughs> when those of us who have some gray hair were younger, you had to wait for the journal, right? You'd go to the library and wait for the, you know, the quarterly publication of that journal. And so in that sense, the journal meant more because it was a packaging. You know, if your field was ecological modeling, then you would wait for the journal ecological modeling so that you would see the up-to-date papers. And any paper that got into that journal had met some sort of quality standard. But now, everything's digital. And so, by and large, it doesn't matter the journal that the paper is published in. What matters is the, um, the quality of the paper, the relevance of the paper, the clarity of the paper. If you get on Google Scholar and type in five keywords, if a paper comes out looking important to your query, you don't care if it's in science or in some national journal. So that's the beauty of the digital world. It's starting to break down this journal-dominated and publisher-dominated system. 
I promised I wouldn't get into open access stuff. But given that Alex mentioned predatory journals, I think that is worth talking about quickly. And so I want to show you guys this. Uh -huh. So this is a very interesting site if and when it loads up. Um, Jeffrey Beal is a, uh, a librarian in the Denver, Colorado area. And essentially what he has done is to create a compendium, essentially a database <laughs> of what, what we could call parasitic or predatory journals. Right? A parasite is a predator that eats you from within. Um, so, what do we mean by parasitic or predatory? It's basically a question of what is the mission of the journal. If the journal's mission is scholarly communication, then they're going to make certain um, decisions. So, for example, when they receive a paper from a developing world country, they may be willing to waive the publication charges. But if a journal's interest is not in scholarly communication, but rather in making money, then they'll make very different decisions. So what Beale does is he reviews this whole field kind of constantly and so these, these posts that come out are fascinating, okay? And I actually, I subscribe to them and I don't subscribe to many things. Um, so, you know, look at this. Strange new open access publisher launches with 42 journals. Boom. Think about it. In this day and age, a journal is just a web page where you can download PDFs. And so in the very worst, very most predatory, very most parasitic cases, literally, all you do is send your manuscript, a PDF, and a check for a certain amount of money, and they post it on their web page. Now that's, that's the worst case. And unfortunately, parasitic and open access have become conflated. And so a year or so ago, the journal Science did what was called a sting operation. You know, like when the police entrap criminals by, by you know, <coughs> laying a trap for them. Well, what Science did, or Science commissioned a retired scientist to do. You guys will like this. Um, they took, he took a manuscript that was patently bad. He wrote a manuscript that had fatal flaws, that had problems with reasoning, had defects in the figures, to make it look like it was coming from some other country, he put it in Google Translate to African French, and then translated it back to English, and then edited it. So it just got a little tone of having been written by a non-native English speaker. <coughs> and then he took that manuscript and he sent it to hundreds of potentially, well, he sent it to open access journals. And of course these, this will come on in a moment, these parasitic journals accepted it. You know, if you're willing to pay, we'll publish it, whatever you want. And of course, he didn't pay because it would have been a lot of money, but he was recording which ones accepted it in spite of all these flaws that were very obvious. 
And there's, there's kind of good sides and bad sides to this, which is to say some of the um, very good journals that happen to be open access basically rejected it out of hand. Um, a lot of the parasitic journals accepted it out of hand, basically just wanting the $500 or $1,000. Um, and then there were cases in the middle. But the sad thing is, you know, if we're going to do a test, Science, the journal, published a feature on this and basically said, look, open access journals are bad. <coughs> but there was no science in science's commentary. Because when you do science, you need to do comparisons. So what they should have done was to send the same manuscript to closed access journals and show that the open access journals were worse. So predatory and open access got conflated. And that's why I truly hate those journals because what they're doing is not just making money off of dumb scientists, but rather they're destroying a very good thing, which is open access journals. They're hurting a very important trend in science.